this time we will have the reading of the scripture for this morning. And we invite all under the sound of my voice to give your Bible up, to share your Bibles with others around you in the household, that you would just not hear the word, but you can also read the word and let the word read you, you and all in your household. Scripture for this morning is from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 14. Love one another. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of life. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling or drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling or jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify his desire. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
We go through some trying times that we find ourselves in. I don't know about you, but sometimes it just seems to overwhelm me as we try to get moving in some kind of direction with some kind of purpose in mind. But we just seem to fall short. We just seem to find ourselves in a time in a moment that really frightens us. Not sure what the next, not day, but the next moment is going to bring out. Wondering about those who are around us and if they even care about us. With all that is going on in Washington, D.C., with all that is going on with so called leadership, and we don't know which way to turn, we don't know who to trust. But we are reminded in the book of Romans, we are reminded about that call who was in jail, the Paul who was trying to lift up and encourage a young brother to speak a word, a bold word, an uplifting word to those who were suffering, those who were confused, those who were under persecution. And again, these initially were not those who were Jewish, but they were those who heard the word. And when they heard the word, the word, did something to them. The word transformed them. The word challenged them. Even though they were being hunted down then as outlaws. And yet the words of encouragement came to them again and again and again. And again and again. Amen. And many of us, many of us think about communities that we have grown up in. Many of us think about what used to be, and some of us get stuck in what used to be. Even as we're going through this pandemic, we're, 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 we're hoping and praying, some are hoping and praying that things will return and be like they used to be. But my brothers and sisters, just look at our history. Just look at what has gone on in our country. What has gone on to us, even as people of different cultures, people who have endured different situations, especially in this country, the land of the free, the land of the brave, and now the land of the confused, All right. wondering what is going to happen. But I don't know about you, but I have learned to depend on Jesus. I have learned to. <laughs> to listen to that word, not just listen to the word, but how to become that word in flesh as he came and lived among us. And so as Paul is writing, he says in that reading that you heard, in the very beginning, in that third, 13th chapter, and that 8th verse, it says, Oh, no one, anything, Oh, no one, anything, except to love one another. My brothers and sisters, have we fallen down with that? Are we peculiar about who we love and who we don't? Yes, there was a time when there were very well identified African American communities in different places. Doctors and lawyers and others lived together in that community, supported one another in that community, yeah. watched out for one another, yeah. neighbors knew neighbors, yeah. and were willing to be there in the time of need. Yeah. But then, isn't it amazing how money, yeah. money, 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 yeah. money. Sometimes money in degrees can change our attitude. Right. Even to folk who are like us, similar to us. And so we find us in this situation. And here again, in the midst of trials and tribulation, Paul is trying to lift up a word to a struggling community. Paul is trying to speak into their lives, into their hearts, that they might remain firm. And what has occurred? 
I'm living in Catonsville, the part of Catonsville that is supposedly was at one time just about totally an African American community. And now, when we walk up and down our streets, now when we look to the left, we look to the right, homes are being rehabilitated. And those coming in don't look like me. Many of them don't talk like me. Very good. But what was is no longer. And I believe we, and not just African American, but the human race is going through this tension, this challenge, because we have become used to something else. And maybe that something else does not what is pleased in the sight of God. Some of y'all remember a man who discovered what could be done with blood plasma. Transfusion to save lives. God used him as a vessel. And he was African American. But soon forgotten for his contribution. And how many times and how many situations have occurred when folk of other cultures, other races have divine stuff, crazy stuff? And there's those who are greedy and they swoop in and take over and claim it all. I, I watched those Amazon trucks cruising through every neighborhood. And those are Mercedes Benz trucks. Yes. Yeah. And they're here, they're there, they're everywhere. I wonder how he did that he's able to do what he's doing. With seeming like nobody's gonna stand in the way, nobody's gonna question them. And yet jobs are disappearing and other things are going on. And my brothers and sisters, we know what's happening in Washington. They have lost their mind. Not just what is 45? But all of them in Congress. Yeah. In the midst of a mess, want to get home, go home. And folks are still suffering. So are still That's right. messed up. That's right. But see, my brothers and sisters, the devil's always busy. But God is busy now. And so even as we thought about what was in the back, and even here in Amarillo County, where we found, from one end of the county to the other, we as family. And yet there are those times and those moments, even within the family circle, folk have been hurt by what folk did. Folk who claim to be religious, folk who claim to know the Lord, and yet they did some things that were devastating and hurtful and painful for others along the way. But again, Paul is writing and he says, oh, no one, yeah. anything, except to love one another. And he says, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, God is taking us to a reality check. God is taking us individually and collectively <clears throat> through this journey so that we can begin to really recognize and realize what really matters, especially what matters to him. I know some folks get upset because I don't wear robes. Y'all don't even know how much a robe costs these days. Why <laughs> robes? All right. In other words. 
Even some of the stuff we have in churches, communities of faith, they don't come cheap. And so my brothers and sisters, I know I had to look in the mirror. I, I had to look at me. And what is it that God is saying to us in the midst of the pandemic? Oh, no one anything. Except, except to love one another. Y'all don't want to hear this. Paul says, you should not commit adultery. And how many of us are aware have been involved in situations that were adulterous situations? Even as we praise God, pray to God, and do all this stuff to God. But heard our brothers and sisters. Somebody ought to say amen. He, he, he says, you shall not murder. Where I live in Pittsville, there's the old Pittsville, part of the African American community, and they built some newer houses on another part of the same street I live on, Wesley Avenue. But the new part, where they built the newer home some years ago, the street is wide. Now, the other part where I live and others live, the street is now. And if your community is like any other community, everybody in the house has a car. Everybody in the house has a car. And when all of the cars cannot fit on the lots, then they're on the street. And if it's on the street on both sides, the street is very narrow. We've been trying to get the county to do something about that. But I think, unfortunately, it almost seems like it's going to have to have somebody hurt bad or killed. Because of the way some are racing up and down the street now, all times of the day and night. You should not murder, you should not steal, you should not covet. That means more than what other people have. And if you had it, you would know what to do. Do I have some witnesses up in here? Stuff to set aside because you wanted it, but once you got it, you really didn't. If any other commandments are summed up in these words, any other commandments are summed up in these words. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. Love your neighbor as you want to be loved. That's, that's, that's what Paul is saying. That, that as the community of faith was growing larger, and more diverse, he wanted to make sure that people understood if God can love you, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whatever you've done with your life, no matter how many mistakes you have made, especially as we're talking about this on this first Sunday, Communion Sunday, where we think about where we've been and what we've done, and if we want God to forgive us, sometimes it is said, leave your communion or whatever way it is, go and walk and find the one that you have hurt, the one you have messed up, the one you have traumatized, before you come before God asking you to be forgiven, well, well, of course, what you've done is mighty as well. But what they've done is me. But that's not what the scripture is saying to us. Love your neighbor as yourself. For love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, Therefore, he's saying, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. See, we, 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 we turn our backs on our reality. 
We had some pops and pans at home. That Rochelle got a long time ago before we got married. She had this cookware. I mean, and it was an extra, I mean, the, the, the cooking on the inside, it, 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 it did not scratch. It, 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 it did good with food. And she had it before we got married. We had it for a while, and then something came up. And she decided to upgrade. Well, the upgrade was not as good. The quality does not go in anymore. Y'all remember that? The quality goes in before the name. Forget that. Forget that quality part. And so it just seemed like, and see, see, see. Paul says, oh no. Except the love one. We turn a blind eye to. Do, 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 do you know where your trash goes? Do you know what companies do with trash that they don't want to bury? But they take it out to sea and dump it. They take so much out to sea and dump it. But you know, nature has a way. Nature has a way. Even when we're dumping deep in the ocean, because of the mess we dump out there, we don't know what's going to come up one day. Even as we are blaming China for what happened, and we don't really know if it all started there. But when we forget about how good God is and how God wants to bless us and we're doing things that mess us up yeah. rather than blessing us, then we have to deal with what has come about. And because more and more, Again, our communities are diverse. If it is a certain community, even for white folk, when some folk move in, other folk move out, try to find another area. But some can't move out. They can't afford to move out. And so they yet remain. And so, my brothers and sisters, God is trying to speak to us if we are people of faith. If we are people who are truly reaching up and out to God and saying, God, bless me. And not just bless me, but help me to be a blessing to others. Paul said at that end, love, do, love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Uh -huh. Jesus also picked it up in Luke's gospel. It says that then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. You know, in Jesus' time, there were those who wanted to test him. They wanted to get him to fail, yeah. to mess up just yeah. sometimes. So this brother, this lawyer in the crowd with Jesus and talking to others, he said to Jesus, what shall I do to inherit yeah. eternal life? That's right. Jesus said to him, it is written, or well, what is written in the law? Why do you read, what do you read there? The, the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and all your mind. And then he said, the lawyer said, and your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you shall live. But, you know, the folks think they all that, and they realize that a situation has come up that's going to make them look bad. The lawyer, after justifying himself, he says to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And today, who is your neighbor? As people are moving out, who is your neighbor? 
And then Jesus said to him, Jesus replied to him, y'all know the story about the brother on the road to Jerusalem. He's on the Jericho road, the most travel road, and he falls into the hands of robbers. He's being knocked down. He's being kicked and stabbed and other stuff going on. They even stripped him of his clothing. And they left him, left him there by the road, half dead. A priest, a minister came by. You ever had a minister pass by when you in the time of need? It do happen. But here this brother, a holy man, who saw him and passed on the other side of the road. I'm not going to get myself dirty with this brother. Likewise, the Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed him down the other side without acknowledging the brother there. And then the scripture tells us there was a Samaritan. These were the people that were half priests, people that were stood on by the Jewish community and others. But he was traveling on the road. And when he saw the man by the side of the road, he didn't just keep on walking by. He didn't do like we do sometimes. We all, we know we're in a situation where God wants to use us to touch somebody's life, to give somebody hope. And many times we find ourselves making excuses and passing to the other side of the road. But this brother did what folk thought would not be done. He took the time not only to help the man on the road, but the scripture said, he took him to an end. Gave him to the innkeeper. And said, take care of them. And when I come back, whatever the building, whatever the building, I will pay. Yep. So you gotta love your neighbor, my brother and sisters, and this family then we gotta love our neighbor because he died for us. He died for us. And that's why now we take communion. And knowing that he died for you, as trifling as you are, as lying a lot of time as you might do. He knows. Even when mama don't know. He knows. And so now let us take the cup and the bread. Let us receive this which God has for you and I. This communion, this time that reminds us that he is the one who knows all our sin. He knows all our transgressions. And he is the one who is able to do what no one else can do. So he blessed the bread. And he gave it to them and gave and gives to us. Saying, take Eat of this in remembrance of the one whose body who broke it and put on that cross while you and I were yet sinners. And then he also took the cup, his blood that was shed, his blood that was spilled out for you. And so, take and drink. My brothers and sisters, we are called to love our neighbors. We don't always pick them, but we are called to be those vessels that demonstrate the love of the risen Savior. So now is your opportunity, as you have received the bread and you received the cup, you are invited to go into the world. Reaching out to all of our neighbors around us, red, yellow, black, and white, to build up humanity, the humanity that God has created, the humanity that God is working with. Go into the world loving your neighbors as you love yourself. Go into the world celebrating life. An abundant life and those blessings that flow from God. For the love of God and the unity of Christ and 
sang the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit our arms. You, me. His arms are open. His heart is there for us. And we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 